We welcome you to Jesus is the Answers broadcast located in Greensboro, North Carolina with Bishop Clarence Humphrey. Jesus is the Answer with an awesome man of God preaching God's word for over 30 years. Jesus is the Answer designed for you and mine. Now sit back in your seat, grab your Bibles, and get ready for a Holy Ghost ride from Jesus is the Answers broadcast in Greensboro. Praise the Lord. Truly, we give God the honor and the glory and the praise. We thank God. I thank God for just allowing us to see another day, allow me to see another day, or to be with you once again in spirit. Hallelujah. I can't be with you in the flesh, but I can be with you in spirit. Hallelujah. I thank God for all of you, for your support. I thank God for what you, how you have been a blessing. And I just thank God for how you supporting the ministry. I just give God the praise, the honor, and all of the glory. Uh, without you, wouldn't be no, need it for me. <laughs> I thank God for you. Praise God. Give God the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. I come to tell you once again that Jesus is still the answer. Oh, the problem, whatever you're going through, Jesus is the answer. Oh, I, I, I want to deal with the 13, 37th chapter of Genesis, talking about Joseph giving God the praise, the honor, and the glory. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to glorify and to magnify your name. We come to lift you up, God. We come to give you praise, honor, and glory. In you, Lord, all things are and all things consist. In you, Lord, you are our strength. You are our joy. You are the peace. God, you are everything that we need and everything that is. And we give you praise, God. I give you praise. I give you glory. Give you honor and praise in Jesus' name. Father, speak to these lips of clay that we may be able to say by the unction of the Holy Ghost that somebody will hear something that will cause them to turn from their, way, turn from their ways and turn to you, God. And somebody will hear, God, that maybe have already claimed to be saved, they're already that saved, God, will get something, God, to get closer to you, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, you do this for us. We'll be ever so careful. Give thy name, the praise, the honor, and all of the glory. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. I want to talk just a few minutes, if I can, from Joseph. Uh, uh, the 27th, 37th chapter of Genesis. Reading just a few verses, uh, verse or two. And Joseph dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger. And the land was Canaan. These are the generations. Jacob. Of Jacob. Joseph being 17 years old. Was feeding the flock. With his brethren. And. The lad was with. The sons of Behu. And. With the sons of Zephyr. His father. Wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. And Israel loved Joseph more than all of his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceful unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brethren, and they hated him the more. I'm going to stop there just for a minute. I want to use for a subject, when God, living in the command of God, living under the anointing of God, being in the anointing of God, Knowing who God is. In today's text, we see a young lad. Joseph, the Bible said Joseph was, Jake, Joseph was feeding his father's flock. And, and Joseph was a young man. Uh, the Bible says he, he, the, he, was just, he, he was just a young man. But when God first visited him, and the Bible says that he was feeding his father's flock and Jacob, his father, loved Joseph because Joseph was the son of his old age. And the Bible says because he loved his son, because he loved Joseph, the, that his brethren, 
Oh, the brother ain't got mad at Joseph. And the Bible said here that they hated him. You know, you, know, you can get hate, hate from anybody else, but come on now. Family, we're not supposed to be hating, fighting one another. He, we're supposed to love one another. His father loved him because he was a young man. So that means his brothers were older, older so they should have known better. They should have loved him more, too, because he was a young man. Not only that, because he was their brother. He was their blood. They should have loved him more. But the Bible said they hated him, Joseph. And because of Joseph dreamed a dream, and the Bible said, and he told the dream to his brethren, and the Bible said they hated him the more. Oh God, it, it, it's a hard, it's hard when, when, when you, your own kin people, your own people you love, people you trust in, the ones that you have to, t you want to turn to in the time of trouble, when they hate you, when there's trouble in the camp. I want to talk about trouble in the camp, when there's trouble in the camp. Oh God, the Bible said that they hated Joseph because their father loved them, loved him more. And I come to tell you, parents, I know we don't make distinction or uh, difference between our children. We don't love one no more than the other. But, they, they, but the people, sometimes they don't understand. When you were a child, when you were a baby, although you're older now, when you were a baby, mama loved you too. Daddy loved you too. They were working with you the same way. Now that you got older, you you're able to take care of yourself, but your younger siblings, your younger brothers and sisters, it's up to you to love them and take care of them. But the Bible said that Joseph dreamed the dream. Now the Lord was with Joseph. The Bible said, and the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord was training Joseph, putting him in a position that one day he would be leader of the world. Oh, God was fixing it for Joseph. The Bible says, and I'm going to paraphrase a little here because of time, but the Bible says that Joseph told his dream. He said, I dream that we were in the field binding sheaves. Otherwise, we were stacking wheat and we we bowed a wheat, my wheat. And Joseph said, my wheat, my, my stalk or my stack stood up as straight and yours made you bind yours and it bowed down to me. Meaning that one day they would bow down to Joseph. And the Bible says, and they hated him the more. Will you dare talk about you're going to rule over me, rule over us? you the youngest. See, they knew he was the youngest. This wasn't new to them. They knew he was the youngest, but they still let acting like kids instead of acting like adults. They hated him the more. And I come to tell you, the Bible says that Jesus, Jesus loved us so much. He gave his life for us. Oh God, and all that Jesus did, all that Jesus gave, all that he did, oh, they hated, they still hated him. They didn't like Jesus. They hated Jesus. So you know what Joe Joseph is going through. If they hated the Lord, oh God, and, and later generations, you know how much they hated their brother. But I come to tell you here, the Bible says that, that Jacob told Joseph, now go see about your brother. They, they, they're over in the field now. They, they went over to feed the flock. Go see your brother, see if your brothers be all right. You can read it down. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but he said, go over and see if they be all right. And Joseph went over to see about his brothers and they wasn't where they were supposed to be. So he was wandering around in the field, in the field and, and a man came to him and said, what you looking for? Who are you looking for, young man? He said, well, I'm looking for my brother and they, they, they were supposed to be here feeding the flock, but I don't see him. And he said, well, they went on down to Dalton, a place called Dalton, and, and that's where they are feeding the flock because they say, well, better grass over there. And Joseph thanked him and began, began to go down to Dalton. And the Bible says that his brethren saw him from a long ways off. They saw Joseph, for Joseph saw them. And they said, here come this dreamer. I want to tell you something. Hate will make you hate your brother. 
Hate will make you do things that you know you shouldn't be doing. Hate will make you kill. Hate will make you steal. Hate will make you lie. Hate will make you backbite. Oh, they hated their brother, so they wasn't thinking right. See, when you hate, hate is of the devil. Oh, I'm trying to get through with this thing, but hate is of the devil. And when you hate, that means the devil is controlling your mind. When you hate, that means the devil has power over you. When you hate, that means the devil is making you do things you normally wouldn't do or say things and act in ways you shouldn't act. Oh God, when the devil is ruling your life, when the devil has got power over your life, it means you gave it to him. You give it to him. And the Bible said the thief, John 10, 10, said the thief coming but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So when the devil is ruling your life, all you know how to do is steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, but I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. They saw their brother coming and they said, let's kill him. Oh, and see then what come of his dreams. I come to tell you, but they, they, they caught Joseph when he got closer. And the Bible said they were planning to kill him. But that Reuben, Reuben was one of the brothers. He said, thus don't kill our brother, for he's our blood. Reuben was the kind of person. Oh, God, he, he, he wants to be on both sides of the fence. He wants to be on Joseph's side because he loved Joseph. He loved his father, but he also loved his brothering. So he, want, he was one that would go back and forth. He was the kind of person. See, you know, you got to make up your mind which way you're going to be. Make up your mind who you're going to serve. Oh, you God, you can't go back be wishy-washy in this day and time he what he said let's don't kill him and they cast him in, and they threw him in a pit and the, but the Bible said but God was with Joseph read it for yourself but God was with Joseph and God had already prepared the pit God had already cleaned out the pit there was no snakes there was no water in the pit there was nothing in there that could hurt him in the pit because God had a purpose God had an anointing God had a power a, a job for Joseph and Joseph Joseph went on. They threw him in the pit and they stripped him of his coat and they tore it and they dripped it in blood. Kill the lamb, kill an animal, rub his coat in their blood, send it to their father. And Joe Jacob rid his clothes threw dust in the air. He moaned for Joseph. Oh, their father was hurting and crying and dying almost because he loved Joseph and he thought that some animal, some animal had to kill Joseph. And the Bible said that his sons and daughters tried to comfort him. Oh, they knew the answer. The sons knew the answer. What was wrong? They knew the truth that they had sold Joseph. Oh, God, they knew the truth, but they were trying to comfort their father. And all they had to do was tell the truth. And it had all been settled. It was all been put in place. But hey, they were held held up. The devil will make you hold on to a lie. The devil will make Make you tell one and then you have to tell another one to make that one sound good Amen. then you got to tell a bigger one to hold the two of them you got to get a bigger bucket to hold the three of them for you know you a professional liar yeah you 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 acting like you love somebody you they were acting like they cared about their father but they were letting their father suffer and die every day oh and the power of the enemy but I want you to know Joseph was in a pit and Reuben had planned that when the brothers had gone, he would come back and take Joseph out of the pit and carry him to his father. But when Reuben had left, uh, there were some Israelites. Uh, but God was with Joseph. Uh, but there were Israelites, and they were they bring back and forth from Egypt and places selling and buying spices and things and taking back to Egypt, taking back to the king or wherever they were going. And the Bible says that they said, well, let's don't kill our brother. Let's sell him into slavery. Let's sell him to the Israelites. And they sold Joseph. They sold him into slavery. Now they went home. Now Joseph 
had been sold into slavery. But the Bible said, but God was with Joseph. I want you to know something there. When God is with you, he's more than the whole world again. You. Oh, the Bible says now Joseph, oh, God was on his way to Egypt. They were taking him in slavery. He was in chains now. They had sold their brother and, they had, and he was on his way to Egypt. And the Bible says when he got to Egypt, after the journey, when he got to Egypt, they sold him Potiphar. Potiphar, one of the king's men, bought Joseph, bought him and carried him to his house. But the Bible says, but the Lord was with Joseph. How you know? How do you know when you're going through? How many of you know when you're going through your trials and tribulations, going through your tests, going through your problems, that God is still there. God hadn't left you. God hasn't left him alone. The Bible said, but God was still with Joseph. And because he was with Joseph, everything that Joseph put his hands to, after he had been bought by Potiphar. Potiphar saw that the young man, everything he touched was blessed. His whole house was blessed. So he put Joseph over his whole house. He put Joseph over everything that he had because he, he could see that the power of Joseph's God was a good God. The power of Joseph's God was blessing him. And everything he put his hands to, Potiphar began, house began to grow. It began to multiply. He had every, God was with Joseph. And, and Joseph was running the house and doing his deed, doing what he was supposed to do. Potiphar liked Joseph. He, he loved Joseph because of the blessings of Joseph, how God was with Joseph. And the Bible says that after a while, how many know that the devil don't let things run but so smooth but so long. And you use anything and anybody he can Amen. to interrupt who you are. You got you to gotta make your mind up and take a stand. But if you don't stand, the devil will come and try to tear you down. Amen. He's a thief. He comes to steal your peace. Joseph was doing the will of his master in, in, in Potiphar's house. And the Bible said, but in Potiphar's house, Potiphar's wife cast her eyes on Joseph. Come on now. She began to look at the young man. He, she began to look at how, how handsome he was. And he was a young man. And how, how equip, equipped he was. And, and all that he could do. And, and all that was going on. And she fast her eyes on him. See, Potiphar gave his wife silver and gold and diamonds and jewels. But I want you to know something. But I don't care how many houses you give your wife. I don't know how many cars, how many jewelry and furs. But I want you to know something. If you don't give her love, it ain't enough. You got to give her some love. She, uh, the body cries out for love. And Potiphar was never home. He was always out somewhere else. And uh, she got lonely uh, and she wanted uh, some love. Uh, and so she started asking Joseph, uh, lie with me uh, or be with me. Uh, and Joseph said, no, how can I do such a wicked thing? Uh, oh, God, God, uh, you are. He, my master hasn't kept anything back from me. But you, because you are his wife. He put me over his house. He gave me everything to do. And I honor and I bless and I thank God. For my master, I thank God for what God is doing. My, my, my God would not allow me to do that. And my master wouldn't appreciate because you are his wife. How can I do such a wicked thing? See, sometimes when you stand up to the enemy and you try to let him know I'm a child of God, I don't sin anymore. I don't drink anymore. I don't cuss anymore. I don't fight anymore. I, I, I love God. I praise God. And I'm glorifying the Lord. And people get mad at you sometimes. I hear people say sometimes, they ain't no good. They ain't no earthly good. Because every time you ask them, how you doing? They always say, I'm blessed, highly favored. That's all they ever say. I'm blessed. What else is it to say but to praise God, to glorify God? Oh, God, but they, if you're used to complaining, if you're used to complaining, you won't hear somebody complain a little bit. But Joseph, Joseph said, I couldn't do that. And one day he went to, in and to do his business. The Bible says he went in to do his business. And when he went into the house to do his business, his, his mistress was there. The Joe, Potiphar's wife was there. She was over Joseph. And she, and she 
couldn't get him to do what she wanted to do, so she grabbed him. And when she grabbed him, the Bible said when she grabbed him and held on to him, and he had to fight his way loose, and he broke loose from her and ran from the house because he didn't want to sin on, with God, on God. He didn't want to sin against his master Potiphar. So he ran, but he left his coat in her hands. And when she realized what was going on, she realized what was happening, she said, oh my God, I got to do something because I know what's going to happen if, if, if he tells it first. So she began to cry out. And when the men of the house came running to see what was going on, she said, this Hebrew, this, this man she put in over the house tried to rape me. And when I cried out, and when I cried out, he fled and left his garments. And when her husband came home, she told the same lie. See, the devil don't mind lying on you. The devil don't mind messing you up. He don't mind stealing from you. And the Bible says that when she cried out to her husband, told her husband that Potiphar put Joseph in the prison. Joseph went to pr put Joseph in prison because of the lie that his wife had told. But the Bible says, but God was with Joseph. Hallelujah. God is still with Joseph. And they put him in prison, but in prison they, 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 they saw God working in Joseph and God working through Joseph. They saw God, what God was doing for Joseph. And they put him over the ward. Oh, he was still a leader. Still learning how to lead. Still learning how God was still teaching him. God was still strengthening him. See, every, see when they meant it for his bad, God made it for his good. Oh, everything that happened to Joseph got him a little closer to the kingdom. Got him a little closer to his anointed, to his appointed time. And the Bible says that Joseph was over the ward. And, and they made him. And he had... He had was doing the king's men, doing the higher up officials. And they were loved Joseph. And they got along with Joseph. And the Bible said one day Joseph came into the ward and they were sad. Their countenance had failed. And he was trying to talk to them, but they were down. And Joseph said, What's, why have your countenance fallen today? You know, you usually, you know, you can tell when something ain't right. He said, why are your countenance fall? And they said, we dreamed a dream. And they, we, they don't know the interpretation. And God, Joseph said, well, God will give you interpretation of your dream. And, and the cupbearer dreamed a dream. And the interpretation of his dream was, was that in three days, God would restore him back to the king would restore, take him back to his office, the cupbearer. And when, when the baker, chief baker, heard the good report, he said, I dreamed a dream also. He said, I dreamed that, that I was making bread and we putting it in the baskets and the baskets were on my head and the birds came and they were eating the bread off of my head. Out of the basket from on my head. And Joseph said, he was looking for a good dream. And Joseph said, uh, in three days, the Pharaoh will lift off thy head. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, you won't get a good report like he did, but Pharaoh will lift off thy head. <laughs> and shown up in three days, <laughs> uh, the baker head was lifted off. <laughs> Pharaoh killed the baker. <laughs> And the cupbearer, he restored back to the kingdom. And Joseph said, remember me when you get back before Pharaoh, that, I, that he will help get me out of this place. Because I, I didn't do anything to deserve being here. But the baker forgot. It wasn't time yet. He forgot all about Joseph and went about his business. That's why the Bible says, put no thought to trust in man, because man will deceive you. Not meaning all the time, but man will forget when joy comes in. Man is only thinking about himself. When joy comes in, man only thinks about what's going on at the moment, at the time. He forgot all about Joseph. But now Pharaoh had a dream. After a while, Pharaoh had a dream and he called all his soothsayers because he was worried and upset, couldn't understand what it was. He called all his 
dream tellers and soothsayers and witchcraft and witches and whatever else he had to try and tear the dream. But nobody could interpret the dream. And God spoke to the cupbearer and he remembered. He said, I remember my faults on this day. King, I remember when I was in jail. We were in jail. You put us in jail. There was a young man there that could interpret dreams and he could probably interpret yours. King, had tried everybody else but the Bible says that they called for Joseph and they put him got him cleaned up shaved and put a robe on him and they got him bathed and got him put up and he came before the king and the king said he had dreamed the dream and he was he could see how Pharaoh was worried and he said but but God will interpret the dream for Pharaoh and Joseph began to give Pharaoh the dream. Oh, what am I saying today? I'm saying that if God's with you, God will give you all that you need. And Joseph told Pharaoh, interpreted by the power of God, the dream that Pharaoh had dreamed. You have to you read it and you can find the dream in the book, in the Bible. But he says that, that, that start in the, the 39th chapter and read through and you can see and, and check up and see what, I, what I'm saying. But Pharaoh told Joseph his dream. And Joseph said, and, and there's going to be a famine. You have a year, seven years of plenty. Everything is going to grow. And everything's going to fill up. And you're going to have more and more and more. But then there's going to be seven years of bad luck. Nothing's going to grow. going to be a famine in the land. And, and the king said, what shall we do? And Joseph said if the king would hire someone and begin to take him and, and let them put up food for the seven bad years. And the king believed Joseph and he said, who can find a greater man than this that God has already uh, is upon in, in. And the Bible says that he made Joseph, gave Joseph his ring. Joseph was number two in all Egypt. There was nobody and nothing in the land higher than Joseph but Pharaoh himself. And Pharaoh was listening and under Joseph. Joseph rose from the outhouse to the White House. He rose from the day with the, with the least to the east. He was the best of all. Joseph was, a, Joseph was the king of Egypt. He was over everything. I come to tell you, you might be going through now. You might be having power troubles now. Things might be happening, but it's happening for your good. The devil may make it for your bad, but God's got it for your good. This is the answers broadcast for Bishop Clarence Hump. Again, thank you so much again for watching. Jesus is the Answers Broadcast, and may God bless you.